I think one of the, one of the biggest and most dangerous things in the vegan community is the, pub, is the, the publicity afforded to the low-fat vegan gurus. It's a problem that those, that those vegan gurus have been so popular in the vegan movement and this idea of fat being the enemy has caused so many people to be in trouble. Those that were on the low-fat vegan diets had the shortest lifespans of all the vegans tested. Because too many vegan promoting gurus take dramatic and irresponsible risks with people's brains and with their health. A lot of vegans and a lot of nutritional gurus advocating a vegan diet are also being irresponsible with not taking care with their clients and their people they advise to make sure they're careful not to become DHA deficient. There are some vegan gurus who are being irresponsible, taking risks with people's, with postpartum depression, with, with DHA insufficiency, and with their, their clients developing dementia. Well, some of the, those dietary gurus are completely irresponsible because there, because a lot of people on vegan diets are not getting DHA to protect their brain with aging, become demented or depressed. And I think it's so reprehensible and irresponsible that so many vegan gurus in the nutritional community are advocating you don't need any supplements except for B12 and causing women to get postpartum depression, you know, people to get demented. And, and people develop serious illnesses in later life that I see all the time. And we know that conclusively, that people who are severely deficient in DHA have brain shrinkage with aging. So the combination of eating the walnuts and, the, and eating more of the nuts and seeds and taking the DHA, and taking the DHA, and taking the DHA, or the, both those things are necessary to afford people the opportunity not to get into trouble, not get depressed or demented on a vegan diet long term. And once your brain shrinks, you're not growing a new brain back again. It's too late. Once you have brain shrinkage and you're losing your memory in your brain, you're not going to bring it back again. You're not going to grow a new brain once you're 70 years old. And once the brain shrinks, you're not, it's not coming back again. You can't grow a new brain. <laughs> Hi guys, Jeff Nelson with VegShores. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to look at something that happened at CVS, the big drugstore chain. CVS has to pay millions of dollars for making what turned out to be fraudulent and illegal claims about algae-derived DHA supplements. They sold DHA by telling people that it could help your brain, that it could help your memory. A DHA supplement company paid for and performed their own study using DHA and then marketed DHA to people who were concerned about dementia. The FTC looked at the study and determined that it was bogus, it was nonsense, the DHA company couldn't make the conclusions that they made, and the FTC banned the company from using the study to market DHA. CVS was sued by a consumer protection group and they are being forced to pay millions of dollars to people who bought this algae-derived DHA from them based on these false marketing claims. But Dr. Furman is still using this discredited study on his website to market DHA, and he makes very similar and even stronger unfounded claims about DHA supplements, and we're gonna look at that in this video. If the claims made by CVS were illegal and fraudulent, how should the claims Dr. Furman is making about DHA be viewed? I'm gonna tell you about the CVS case, and you can decide. In this video, we're going to look at how Dr. Furman denigrates the plant-based doctors who disagree with him and don't recommend DHA. Then I'm going to show how no scientific body or medical organization with an interest in dementia or Alzheimer's or any other neurological or psychiatric disease, none of them recommends DHA for prevention, and none of them say that low DHA or being a long-term vegan causes or promotes dementia. In fact, one of them, the World Health Organization, specifically recommends that people not take DHA for the prevention of dementia. Next, I'm going to show you how, although Dr. Greger recommends DHA to vegans, he's privately written that the evidence in favor of DHA supplementation, that is the evidence that he used, could not be weaker and is of the lowest quality. I'm going to show you what he wrote, and despite what he says in private, he continues to recommend DHA in articles and videos. 
Finally, I'm going to show that Dr. Michael Clapper has changed his position on DHA supplements. I'm going to play a video statement from Dr. Clapper explaining why he no longer takes DHA himself and why he now recommends against vegans taking a regular DHA supplement. Now, Dr. Furman, he uses his status as a physician to try to scare people into buying his DHA supplement, and he does this with unproven claims that actual brain and dementia experts give no credence to. And one strategy to increase business sales is to try to bash who you perceive to be your competition. And Dr. Furman derisively labels people he sees as competitors, low-fat vegan gurus, uh, doctors like Dr. Esselstyn, McDougall, Neil Bernard, the Pritikin program, Engine 2 Diet, Colin Campbell, Forks Over Knives, and so on. So let's look at what happened when CVS, the massive drugstore chain, made unsupported statements to sell DHA, statements about DHA and brain health, memory, all the things that people who are worried about dementia are focused on. CVS's sales were shut down by the FTC, a company called Martech Biosciences Corporation, a supplement company that makes algae-derived DHA. They paid for and conducted a study, and they claimed that the study showed that all kinds of brain and memory benefits came from taking DHA supplements. CVS was sued in a class action suit that was initiated by the Center for Science in the Public Interest, which is a really great consumer protection agency, because CVS was scaremongering about dementia and implying that taking a DHA supplement would be like insurance and would prevent dementia. Here's an article from 2016 when the suit was filed. It says, CVS boasts that its Algel 900 DHA dietary supplement is clinically shown to improve memory, but relies solely on an industry-conducted study that the Federal Trade Commission has concluded does not support that claim, according to a lawsuit filed in federal court today. The nonprofit Center for Science and the Public Interest, which filed the class action complaint with two law firms, says that high-quality clinical studies have shown that omega-3 fatty acids, including DHA, work no better than a placebo at improving cognitive function. And it goes on, that study known as the Midas study was funded and conducted by Martech Biosciences Corporation for the purposes of promoting its own algae-based DHA supplement. So this is just like Dr. Furman's supplement company funding his own research, his old DHA study to help sell and market his own products. So it continues, but the FTC determined that the study does not reveal any improvement in working memory and banned Martech from basing any memory claims on it. The case was settled earlier this year, just a few months ago, and here's an article about it. And an expert from CSBI was talking about what had happened. CVS is knowingly exploiting the fears of consumers, many elderly who may have legitimate concerns about their memory or cognitive function, which makes these illegal claims especially concerning. It goes on, a 2014 meta-analysis published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition looked at 34 studies involving 13,000 participants and concluded that consuming DHA does not promote cognitive function in terms of composite memory, executive function, and processing speed domains does not improve cognitive performance in terms of recognition, and so on. It goes through a list of things that DHA does not do for your brain, which the supplement company had claimed that it did. While the FTC banned Martech supplement company from using their bogus study to sell DHA because the conclusions are not reliable, Dr. Furman continues to use this discredited study to try and persuade people to buy his DHA. Here is Dr. Furman's DHA marketing page. I've previously shown that dementia experts like Professor David Simon at Harvard Medical School said that this page looked like a biased sales pitch rather than an article written by an objective health professional. If you scroll down, you'll see this line. For example, one study in adults with mild age-related cognitive decline compared DHA and placebo taken for six months and administered learning and memory tests before and after. In this study, the DHA group improved their learning and memory scores. And it shows citations of number 35 and number 36. So Dr. Dr. Furman lists two references to back this up. The first reference is for the discredited study that CVS got sued for. This is citation number 35. And the second reference is for a press release about the discredited study that CVS was sued for. Now, the source of this press release is the Council for Responsible Nutrition, which is a lobbying group for the supplement industry, the lobbying group CRN 
and they say their mission is to sustain and enhance a climate for our members to responsibly develop, manufacture, and market dietary supplements, functional food, and their nutritional ingredients. So it's a marketing group that helps companies like the one Dr. Furman owns to make money selling supplements. Now, do you think Dr. Furman would have a problem with the meat and dairy industry promoting their products with a discredited study and then listing a news release to the same discredited study as an additional reference? How would you rate uh, the standards of a researcher who does something like this. Now, Dr. Greger says that DHA research, like the research Dr. Furman features on this page, is very low quality research. That doesn't stop him from promoting DHA on his Nutrition Facts website, though. This is the video Dr. Greger made discussing why he recommends vegans take a DHA supplement. And in the video, he cites all the studies that he's relied on to make that conclusion. I've already discussed and took apart this video of Dr. Greger's. This, this was my video about it, which you can watch, where I showed how Dr. Greger is using extremely weak science and is using commercial research, research from Joel Furman's DHA supplement company, you know, to push DHA. Well, it turns out that Dr. Greger apparently agrees with me that the research he's using is extremely low quality. At the time Dr. Greger made the video, a well-respected plant-based doctor contacted him about it, and he asked Dr. Greger, you know, wasn't Dr. Greger re ex relying on extremely weak research, you know, and weak science to push DHA to all vegans? On a scale of one to 10, he asked Dr. Greger, where would you rank the quality of evidence for your recommendations that vegans take a DHA supplement? The evidence for B12, for example, is probably a 10 on a scale of one to 10, because we know vegans need to be aware of B12. So where, Dr. Greger, would you put the quality of DHA supplement research on a scale of one to 10? Well, Dr. Greger replied, and here was his response. If B12 is a 10, then DHA is a one. B12 deficiency is deadly. The evidence supporting DHA supplementation is weak, but better safe than sorry. So when Dr. Greger was asked point blank to rate the research supporting DHA supplements on a scale of one to 10, he gave it a one, the lowest possible number that you could give it. He didn't even give it a two, it's a one. It can't get any lower. It's like, you know, what the heck, maybe this research is all nonsense, but just in case it turns out, you know, some of it is true, you might as well spend the money and take a DHA supplement. The question is, why would Dr. Greger recommend something that had such weak evidence supporting it? And how many other recommendations has Dr. Greger made that are not supported by good evidence? Dr. Greger receives money from someone who runs a supplement company, Dr. Furman. He lists Dr. Furman as a benefactor of his nonprofit. Benefactor is the highest level of donors he lists, and Dr. Furman, as you can see, is near the top of Dr. Greger's benefactors list, suggesting he's particularly important to Dr. Greger. Now, some YouTube channels set up Patreon so that people can donate to help keep their channel going. Dr. Greger set up Nutrition Facts as a charity, so the tax returns are publicly available, and you can see how he chooses to spend his charity's money. So we can see, for example, that in 2017, Dr. Greger paid himself about $185,000 as salary from his charity, in addition to his expenses and so on. At least part of Dr. Greger's salary, therefore, comes from Dr. Furman, because Dr. Furman makes a significant contribution to Dr. Greger's operation. Uh, according to Dr. Greger's website, Furman is a supplement salesman with a direct financial interest in the question of selling DHA and other supplements. Dr. Greger is well aware of this. And Dr. Greger is called a partner of Dr. Furman and is on the scientific and research board of the Nutritional Research Foundation, which is the organization that Dr. Furman runs that funded and conducted a DHA study to help with DHA marketing and sales. Dr. Greger even uses Dr. Furman's uh, study, as I said, as part of his case that vegans should buy DHA supplements, though he doesn't reveal that he, him reveal that he himself is part of Dr. Furman's research organization that he's citing here. So it's an undisclosed conflict of interest when Dr. Greger is receiving money from someone who sells and profits from a product that Dr. Greger is actively promoting. I'm not accusing Dr. Greger of, you know, purposely trying to deceive people, but I am saying that he has an obligation to inform his audience about the conflict of interest whenever he discusses DHA. 
for an analogy, if I were being paid by a bicycle company to help run my, run my YouTube channel, and then I made videos about certain kinds of bicycles and that you know this company and maybe other companies sell because I generally believe you know they're great bikes, that's a conflict of interest that I should disclose, that I'm recommending these bikes, but I'm also receiving money from a bike company. In Dr. Greger's case, I think it's more serious because doctors have to be held to a higher standard. They're dealing with people's health. I've been asked by a few people about my friend, Dr. Michael Clapper, and what about his recommendation that vegans take a DHA supplement? Could you, you know, interview Dr. Clapper about DHA? Well, I've known Dr. Clapper for almost 30 years, and we recently had a long discussion about DHA, and Dr. Clapper has revised his position. He made a video explaining his thinking, and I'm putting a link to that full video below. Here is an excerpt. Well, uh, this was the way it was till recently when uh, my friend Jeff Nelson over at VegSource uh, contacted me and said, you know, Doc, when you look at the studies in the scientific literature and discard those that have been planted there by the DHA supplement industry, and there's some really legitimate sounding ones, the DHA uh, supplementation prevents dementia and improves cognition. Those studies are in the literature and they look official and were some of the ones that I had been basing my recommendations on. But when I look closely at them on just recommendation, it turns out the two major premises that I have been acting on, one, that low DHA levels in vegans predispose them to dementia, and two, taking DHA supplementation will prevent dementia, there really are no solid scientific studies supporting those two premises. Well, that was disturbing to me, of course, uh, but yeah, I figured, yeah, it's benign stuff and our body makes it and uh, I'll just take it anyway because it might help my skin oils, um, it has an anti-inflammatory effect uh, and might even help my brain function and might even prevent dementia. So uh, because my diet uh, sometimes consists of a sandwich in an airport and a dinner at an Indian restaurant and my alpha limonic uh, intake might be quite low. What's the harm in taking some DHA, especially when I'm traveling on the road? Well, the reality of that uh, showed up in some studies that uh, Jeff Nelson sent me regarding the researchers at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Institute in Seattle, where they had been following a subset of men who seemed to be developing a very aggressive form of prostate cancer. And when they checked their levels of DHA in their blood and tissues, they were significantly elevated. And uh, they wondered, well, maybe because they are getting their DHA largely from fish, maybe it's from the PCBs in the fish or some contaminants. But when they did the analysis and they uh, ruled out the uh, contaminating factors, it turns out, no, the high DHA levels may make the cell membranes unstable in these men's prostate and, and predispose it to malignant transformation. We're not sure the effect of high DHA levels in women, but maybe they just haven't shown up yet. But the findings in the men were certainly enough to really make me reconsider my recommendations. So I've changed my thinking on taking supplemental DHA. I've stopped taking it myself. And I'm going to stop recommending that uh, people take the supplemental DHA themselves. You can watch Dr. Clapper's full video, and I have included a link to it below. But a physician or scientist with integrity is not afraid to change positions on a health issue if and when better evidence is presented to him or her. Uh, when you watch Dr. Clapper's video, uh, it will be obvious that he's a man of high integrity and humility whose top priority is the welfare of his patients and those who follow his recommendations. No one can be right 100% of the time, and I admire Dr. Clapper's courage in making this public video. Dr. Furman makes several unfounded claims about DHA. One of these is his unproven idea that low DHA will cause depression and that once your brain shrinks, you can't reverse it. Like his claims about dementia, it turns out these statements aren't actually true either. With depression, it's the other way around. Depression can actually 
cause negative changes in your brain. That's been documented. And as far as not being able to reverse brain shrinkage, even that turns out to be false. For the record, here are three studies showing that brain shrinkage can be reversed. This one says, thus, regular exercise may be an especially beneficial intervention to counteract cortical atrophy in all risk groups and may provide protection against future cognitive decline in both healthy elders and MCI. So you can prevent or reverse brain shrinkage with exercise. Here's another. These findings showed that purposeful activity embedded within a social health promotion program halted and in men reversed declines in brain volume in regions vulnerable to dementia. So specific kinds of social activities can reverse declines in brain volume. Here's another. Depression and mood disorders are characterized by structural as well as neurochemical alterations in the brain. However, these changes are not permanent and can be blocked or reversed with behavioral and pharmacological treatments. So certain behavioral activities and even certain drugs can reverse brain shrinkage. It's not permanent as Dr. Furman repeats again and again. But this is what happens when a doctor like Dr. Furman tries to talk about subjects outside his specialty. How do you think Dr. Furman would fare in a debate with an actual dementia expert? Okay, I've interviewed real dementia experts like Dr. David Simon at Harvard University. The statements about dementia and DHA being made by Dr. Furman and unfortunately repeated by others are not supported by evidence. That's what he says. I wanna make some observations about Dr. Greger for a moment because I believe they're very relevant to the DHA question. Dr. Greger has said he became a doctor in order to become a public speaker. Uh, he turned into a very successful social media personality, which is great for him, but Dr. Greger has never treated a patient. I'm putting a link below to a recent interview he did with Dr. John McDougall talking about his decision not to become a practicing doctor. You started out in general medicine, but never really have seen many patients, have you? Oh, it was really just my postgraduate medical training. Yeah, I was never in clinical medicine. So in this interview, Dr. Greger explains his lack of clinical experience. Uh, you can watch it. He never completed residency training and he never practiced medicine in any capacity. Instead, he became a vegan activist driving across the country, living out of his car to become a professional speaker on the vegan diet. You can see photos of Dr. Greger on his website wearing a white doctor's coat and having a stethoscope around his neck. Now understand, these aren't actually clothes that Dr. Greger has ever worn professionally. He's never treated patients. He's not listening to anyone's heartbeat with a stethoscope or wearing a white coat in his role as a doctor. This is just for photo shoots. It's a doctor costume for social media. It looks like he's wearing the white coat that he got in medical school because it's got the name of the hospital affiliated with his medical school from almost 20 years ago. I mean, if I posed for photos uh, wearing a soccer uniform and holding a soccer ball, but I never actually played soccer, that would sort of be comparable to what Dr. Greger is doing here. Dr. Greger also has never conducted any clinical research and he has no research training. And yet for some vegans, he is their source for nutrition information in the vegan community. So what can you do to lower your risk of dementia? Well, the Lancet Commission's evidence-based guideline on dementia, for example, estimates that about 35% of the risk for dementia is within our control. Included in this 35% is exercising regularly, not smoking, maintaining a healthy weight, and treating depression. Another guideline published by the World Health Organization advises exercising regularly, not smoking, and following a healthy diet. The Alzheimer's Association recommends that people engage in regular exercise, maintain strong social connections, and follow a heart-healthy diet to lower the risk of dementia. Dementia prevention guidelines from Canada emphasize exercise, avoiding tobacco smoke, controlling blood pressure, and strengthening social connections. There's no mention in any guideline anywhere that supplementing with DHA has any value for preventing dementia or that low levels of DHA or long-term adherence to a vegan diet are risk factors for dementia. Similarly, there's no guideline that recommends DHA for the prevention or treatment of depression. I've shown you how Dr. Furman scaremongers to sell DHA and says that the low-fat vegan gurus are irresponsible for not making sure that their patients don't get into trouble 
due to DHA deficiency. Why is it Dr. Furman is restricting his attacks to vegan doctors who don't recommend DHA supplements? Vegans are not the only people who don't eat fish. And moreover, we know from Dr. Furman's own DHA study that vegans and non-vegans have basically the same omega-3 blood levels. Here's its study where they concluded that omnivores and vegans have the same low, according to his definition, level of DHA in their blood. So if Dr. Furman is truly concerned about low DHA in the public, shouldn't he be crusading as well against hundreds of thousands of primary care doctors who don't recommend uh, DHA or neurologists or dementia specialists across America who don't recommend DHA. There's no medical organizations of any kind that I know of that recommend DHA. Where is Dr. Furman's outrage at the Alzheimer's Association or the American Academy of Neurology or the American College of Physicians or the American Academy of Family Physicians? I've never heard any criticism from Dr. Furman towards the American Academy of Pediatrics, and yet they don't recommend DHA supplementation for children. I wonder why Dr. Furman only criticizes a small number of vegan doctors who coincidentally, Dr. Furman says, get too much publicity. I think one of, the, one of the biggest and most dangerous things in the vegan community is the, pub, is the, the publicity afforded to the low-fat vegan gurus. In May of this year, the World Health Organization published guidelines on lowering the risk of dementia. If you read them, they do not include taking a DHA supplement as part of the known strategies for lowering risk. In fact, they specifically recommend against taking DHA for preventing dementia. They say recommendation number three, vitamins B and E, PUFA, which includes DHA, and multi-complex supplementation should not be recommended to reduce the risk of cognitive decline and or dementia. Dr. Furman really needs to update his diatribes. I mean, he can continue disparaging the low-fat vegan gurus as he's done for a long time. But let's be fair, he needs to start calling out the gurus at the American Academy of Neurology, the gurus at the Alzheimer Association, and the American College of Physicians, the American Academy of Family Physicians, and the American Academy of Pediatrics. And let's not forget the World Health Organization, the ones who have taken the word irresponsible to a new level by actually recommending that people do not take DHA to prevent dementia. The entire medical profession is irresponsible for not protecting people's brains. I mean, how does Dr. Furman know this? Because once the brain shrinks, you're not, it's not coming back again. You can't grow a new brain. Thanks for watching this video to the end. Please hit a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to get notifications. I will see you on the next one. Thank you.